the following question states that acidified magnate 7 ions, acidified means uh, presence of H plus 1, can be used to analyze solutions containing nitrite ions, bititration in acidic solution and it says that NO2 minus 1 exists as HNO2 molecules and you're being asked to use the data booklet to construct the ionic equation for this reaction. So, the three reactions that uh, they've told us is that the solution is acidified, there's MnO4 minus 1 ions and there's NO2 minus 1 uh, existing as HNO2. So, if you look for the data booklet where these three things are involved, then the first two equations for MnO4 minus 1 that I can spot are the ones that I've highlighted over here. And for HNO2, I can spot this other equation where NO3 minus 1 and HNO2 are in equilibrium. There is no mention of HNO2 anywhere else. So, I'm going to use uh, these three equations, copy them. Now, here you can see I've copied uh, all three reactions which involve acidified MnO4 minus 1 ions where MnO4 is with H plus 1 ions or uh, involving HNO2. And I need to predict what the reaction is going to be. So, the higher potential gains electrons and the highest potential is this one. It has the greatest tendency to actually gain electrons. And the lower potential, which is this one, would be the one that would lose electrons. It's going to go in the backward direction. So, that would give me my overall reaction. Uh, this equation is going to gain electrons and there's nothing wrong with, with it. MnO4 minus 1 and H plus 1 acidified. These are your reactants. Make sure you check whether they are your reactants or not. And HNO2 is the one that's losing electrons and you do have HNO2 as well as your reactant. You just need to make the number of electrons gained and lost equal. So, let's do that. Uh, the equation above should be multiplied by 2. So, it would become 8H plus 1. This would become 6 electrons. 2 would appear over here and this would become 4. And the equation below should be multiplied by 3. So, this would become 9H plus 1 and this would become 6 and we're multiplying by 3 and 3 H2Os. Now, you can see that the number of electrons gained and the number of electrons lost are equal. So, I'm going to add the two equations up. Uh, I'm going to add the reactants. So, these are my reactants. Uh, in the first one, it's 2MnO4 minus 1. So, add them up, 2MnO4 minus 1 plus there are 8 H plus 1 ions uh, plus in the other equation, the reactants are 3 HNO2. So, it's 3 HNO2 and 3 H2Os. And I'm going to add up the products as well. So, the products are these. In the first one, the products that are being formed are 2 MnO2 and 4 H2Os. And in the second one, the product that's being formed is 3 NO3 minus 1. and 9H plus 1. So, that's my overall reaction which uh, which probably can be simplified. For example, the 8H plus 1 and the 9H plus 1 can get, get cancelled out. There's only going to be 1H plus 1 left on the right side and the 3 water molecules and the 4 water molecules over here, they can get cancelled out as well. So, the equation finally is so, this finally is my overall equation of this reaction. But the thing with this reaction is, specifically this reaction is, that this reaction does not end over here. Because the products that are formed, uh, like MnO2, they might end up reacting again. So, I'm now going to figure out whether if I add further HnO2, because I was reacting HnO2, and the product that has been formed is now MnO2. The MnO4 minus 1, all this MnO4 minus 1 has been converted into MnO2. So, what I'm just checking is if I keep adding HnO2, would it now react with the MnO2, the product that is formed or not? Uh, and this is also acidified. So, let's try and figure out whether a further reaction is possible and we're going to write down all the reaction equations. So, I'm going to use the same uh, HnO2 equation. There's only one of them and let's open the data booklet to find out the equations for MnO2. So, I'm now going to pick the equation right at the top over here, uh, the one with 1.23 volts. It, it has MnO2 and 4H plus 1 and it's forming an Mn2 plus. So, here are my two equations and as you can see, uh, the higher potential gains electrons. So, that's going to go in the forward direction uh, and MnO2. 
uh, is the higher potential. So MnO2 that has been formed in the previous reaction. If you keep on adding HnO2, the HnO2 would also react with the product. So the reaction has not finished yet. Uh, HNO2, you first start adding HNO2, it starts reacting with MnO4 minus 1. But once all the MnO4 has been converted into MnO2, the HNO2, if you keep adding HNO2, it would start reacting with MnO2 itself, the product that is formed. And MnO2, MnO2 is going to get further uh, reduced. And HNO2 is the lower potential, it's going to lose electrons and uh, it's going to go in the backward direction. So the overall reaction is if we add up the reactants, uh, the reactants in the first equation are HNO2 plus H2O and the reactant in the second equation is MnO2 plus 4H plus 1 and the products, so these were the reactants in the second equation and the products that are being formed in the first reaction are NO3 minus 1 plus 3H plus 1 and the products in the second one are Mn2 plus plus 2H2O. The H2Os can be simplified. Uh, there's going to be 1H plus 1 left over here, none on the other side. So the reaction over here that you have is going to be the second reaction that's going to take place is HNO2 would start reacting with MnO2. And uh, there's going to be 1H plus 1 left on this side and the product would be NO3 minus 1 and Mn2 plus plus there's going to be a water molecule as well. So that is my second reaction. So I've highlighted two reactions. That's the second reaction that's taking place and there was previously a reaction that was taking place which was this reaction. That MnO4 reacting with HNO2, HNO2 starts reacting with MnO4, MnO2 is formed and further on HNO2 then starts reacting with the product itself, a chain reaction starts and then converts it into Mn2 plus again. Now what I'm going to do is, since the reaction has two steps, I'm going to, I'm going to add the two steps together. Hence finally, so finally the two equations are together, so just start adding them up. And it's going to be, if you add up the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify things first. The H plus 1 should get cancelled out. Uh, the MnO2s, uh, the MnO2 should get cancelled out as well because in the first step uh, MnO2 is being produced and the second step it's getting used up again. Uh, I just need to multiply this equation, entire equation by 2. And if I do that, the MnO2s are going to get cancelled out as well. Now if I start adding up things, it's going to be 2 MnO4 minus 1. Plus there are going to be 5 HNO2 molecules and the products are going to be uh, on the left side. There is on the right side, you're going to have 5 NO3 minus 1 ions and there would be 2 Mn2 plus plus there would be there would be uh, three water molecules. So let me just check whether that. So you have uh, three water molecules and you have five NO3 minus one ions and they're two Mn2 plus. And over here you have five water molecules and they're two MnO4 minus one ions. So that's basically your final, final equation of the reaction. Now, the whole process took a very long time because it was a chain reaction. And at the end of the day, it was MnO4 minus 1 that was actually changing into Mn2 plus. Now, one thing to take from this is, because it was a very small question, one thing that you have to understand is that when you have reactions with MnO4 minus 1, MnO4 minus 1 has a lot of equations and a lots of chain reactions that are possible. And MnO4 minus 1 usually gets reduced to Mn2 plus as we saw in this step. It did not happen in one step. It first got reduced, uh, it first got reduced to, uh, with a first equation, which we, which we wrote over here, that it first got reduced, the MnO4 minus 1 first got reduced to MnO2, and then it, in the next step, it got reduced to Mn2 plus. Now, what you could do is, you can make things much easier, you can make your life much easier. That when you started off with the reaction, the easiest step is because, after doing all of this, 
and just for two marks it doesn't make sense so after doing all of this you should know that mn of 4 minus 1 is basically eventually getting reduced to mn2 plus so why not pick the 1.52 volts equation right at the beginning and that would solve your uh, whole question without going into a lot of details so this is the reason why uh, we generally ignore the 1.67 volts when we are dealing with mn of 4 minus 1 we usually take the 1.52 volts equation because at the end of the day, even if you use this equation, uh, the MnO4 minus 1 would first get reduced to MnO2 and then that MnO2 would get further reduced to Mn2 plus. Uh, so it's completely pointless. Why don't do, do that in the first step? Why don't choose the first equation? Because you already know that it's going to get reduced to Mn2 plus. So always choose 1.52 volts, even though it's not the highest potential. Uh, uh, and hopefully this is clear that in the, in the, in the preceding steps, even if you had selected this one, the result would have been the same. And the last thing about this is the E0 cell, which is uh, uh, higher potential minus lower potential. So we've already figured out that we shouldn't have gone into the, so, so much detail. We should have stuck to these, uh, to, we should have picked this equation instead of actually going with this equation, which I'm cutting out. Just don't use the 1.67 volts. Uh, use 1.52 volts right from the beginning, and that would save you a lot of time. Uh, so the answer would be 1.52 minus 0.94. E0 cell is higher potential minus lower potential or reduction potential minus oxidation potential. So 1.52 minus 0.94, that should give me, if you add 52 and 6, that should give me 0 0.58 volts.